All right, good Erev Shabbos, everybody. It's Erev Shabbos, Parshas Pahalos. Let's uh, share some Divrei Torah and stories related to Parshas Pahalos. Uh, there was a, a story that I saw some time ago from my Rebbe, from Kalver Rebbe Shlita from Williamsburg. So, Gesundheit. It means Rafuah Shlema, Rabbeinu Rav Moshe ben Rezel. About his holy ancestor, Rabbi Isaac of Kalev, who had a special guest there in Kalev. Now, uh, Rabbi Isaac Kalver was not only the rabbi, he was also the rav. He, he had a position as the rabbi of the town. You know, paid position wasn't paid very much. But he had to ask for a, a raise at one point, actually. But he um, he had a guest, another rabbi who was a rav, again, which was uh, not a common occurrence, was uh, the Heilige Tzadik, Rebbe Levi Yitzchak ben Saras Hashem, Rebbe Ditch of Schus Yigalainu, Al Kol Yisrael Amen, the Heilige Bardich of a rav. And so I, I imagine that, that during that trip to Hungary, when the Bardich of a rav was visiting Rabbi Isaac Kalver and Hungary, although it's not right next to each other. Um, I imagine that was also when he visited Krula, which was when my, my Zaydas met the Bardichever. Um, my Babas and, uh, really were the ones who got the brachas from the Bardichever. My Zayda, I'm saying going back, my holy ancestor, or Moshe Arya Krula, was the Rav and Krula, was the second Krula Rav, or Moshe Arya Ostreicher. And uh, and I told many times the story of how the Bardichever came to visit him. He didn't want to see him at first, but the Rabbitson was interested in receiving a bracha from Tzadik, and the children all received bracha. So I'm imagining my Baba, who's the Rabbitson, going back in, in Changer, uh, might have been among the children who received the bracha from the Heilig Bardichever. Anyway, so the Berdichever, he was spending Pesach in Kalev, by the Kaliver. And so before Pesach, one of the things by Tzadikim, it's a very big avoida, is Mayim Shalano. That the water that you use to knead the dough for the matzahs has to rest overnight. And so the, the night of Bedikas uh, uh, Chometz, before you make Bedikas Chometz, or any time you're going to shep water for matzah. If you're going to bake matzah the next day, you shep the water early, uh, uh, near before around sundown time. Uh, you you draw the water from the well, whatever. Or nowadays you turn on the faucet, or whatever, and you leave it to rest overnight so the water should cool down. As I is that's that's the tradition. We're not going to get into the scientific aspects of the water cooling down and so we, we'll, uh, we're just going to that's what it has to do, the water has to cool down because if it's too warm it could become chametz a little quicker so um, and by the by the Hasidic Rebbe's they always make a big avoid a big asik for Maim Shalonu that it's it's a hachana uh, for a mitzvah it's a way to prepare to do a mitzvah of, of baking matzah, which itself is a prep- it's not the mitzvah itself to bake the matzah. It's also it's a preparation for the mitzvah of eating the matzahs. Uh, but uh, but a lot of the tzaddikim they like to go themselves to shnad the vites to go cut the wheat, and they'll and they'll grind the wheat and uh, into flour and so forth. Do all the work that's involved in the matzahs. And, and part of that is is, is Maim Shalano, is, is the water that has to rest overnight. So, so of Isaac Calver and uh, and the Bardichever, you can imagine these two big tzaddikim shepping Maim Shalano. And so, Rabbi Isaac had earthenware vessels. Now they use, you know, plastic buckets. I only was once ever by Maim Shalano here in Vizhnitz. Uh, before he was the Rebbe, the, the Vizhnitz Rebbe here in Kaimisha Lake when when his father was still alive, but I was there by him for Maim Shalano. Excuse 
excuse me, I'm a little sore throat. Anyway, sorry about that. Anyway, so they had earthenware vessels where they were holding the water in there. And the Barditchever was so excited, Kedarka Bekoidish, that he was dancing around and he had his eyes closed and he didn't realize that he broke this earthenware vessel, this earthenware jug. He was just holding the the top rim and the handles. He didn't realize the whole thing was broken. The water's all over the floor. Everything that he was trying to accomplish was, was ruined. Now, Rabbi Isaac Oliver was just as excited, but he wasn't dancing around like this. And he said to the Barditchever, he said that now he understands in Parshas Baloischa it says um, Lahagid Shiv Aharon Shlevshina. We ask in Aharon, Aaron did like God commanded. And uh, and Rashi explains that this means that why does it mean what does it say that uh, and and uh, Aaron followed the commands of God when it comes to lighting the menorah what we we think and and it says tell over the praise of Aaron that he didn't change anything that God said he didn't deviate from God's word the thing is we have Aaron the Kohen the great high priest, the brother of Moses. Why would we ever think that he would deviate in any way from God's word? So Isaac Calver said, of course not. But that he had enough self-control, meaning he was probably so excited, he'd want to shuckle. And, you know, I remember seeing in Yushalayim by Tzvi Mary Zilberberg, he shuckled so much with a lulav and Esau, he broke like three lulavim uh, in one hallel, you know, and he had to get another lulav and another lulav, and they had for him, because they knew he was going to do it, right? And, and it was the same thing by other tzaddikim, it, it, was, it was such an Indian by, by tzaddikim like this, but by Aaron Akoyan, I guess, he probably wanted to do like that, he probably felt like that, but he had enough self-control that he didn't spill the the oil and everything all over the Bismigdash, all over the Mishkan, he was able to actually pour the oil, light the menorah, and he wasn't chuckling so much that he he knocked he didn't knock over the whole menorah. So that's that's the that's what it means. All right, have a good Shabbos, everyone. We'll see you later. Good Shabbos.